Uh, thank you, Kathy, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you for having me here tonight. I'm sorry I couldn't make it in person, especially considering the illustrious guest list that has gathered. But technology is a wonderful thing, and I'm so glad I could join you in this way. So as you probably know, I write a lot about Julian Assange. And I want to use this time to scope out my like, inner landscape for you to show you why. You might also know I'm really fond of saying that those who control the narrative control the world. And I'm fond of saying that not just because it's true, but also because it points to the solution as well as the problem. When you truly see that whoever controls the narrative controls the world, you can easily zero in on the inherent weakness in their power structure. And that weakness is that it is all reliant on belief in their stories. So when you attack their stories, when you shine truth on their lies, you are attacking their power base because you can't do horrible things to people and to our planet without gaslighting the public into consenting for them. If they let people make up their own minds about their actions, then the people would instantly stop them doing all those horrible things. They must control the story about what they're doing. And that's usually by manipulating our sense of right and wrong and by distorting and obfuscating abuses of power. So as a journalist, obviously there are many, 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 many bad things happening in the world today and all are equally deserving of attention. But for me, few of them are as useful at pointing directly to the underlying power structure while highlighting its key strategies and outlining its weaknesses and also showing people how to actually use the tool, which we must use to fight them, as is the example of Julian Assange. When Assange started WikiLeaks, he did so on the premise that corrupt and unaccountable power is a problem in our world and that that problem can be fought with the light of truth. And what did corrupt and unaccountable power do? It responded right on cue by detaining, silencing and controlling the narrative about him by smearing him until the outcry about his detention was significantly muted. So as powerful as the leaks are, it's not simply each publication of WikiLeaks that highlights the machinations of corrupt power. It's also the fact that the very existence of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange has created a situation where power has had to overextend itself and it's using all its tricks right out there in the open in order to try and shut WikiLeaks down. Because ideally, inverted totalitarian power likes to work in its dark magic behind the scenes by doing what they like and pacing a compliant population into supporting it. But by watching who attempts to shut Assange down and how they do it, we are gathering a working picture of how power maintains control of the population through the matrix of narrative control. So I write a lot about the plight of a Julian Assange for the same reason I write a lot about the Iraq invasion. His persecution, when you sincerely examine it, exposes undeniable proof that we are in fact ruled by a transnational power establishment which is immoral and dishonest to its core. So what can we learn about this unelected transnational power establishment through the lens of the persecution of Julian Assange? Well, we can easily see that anyone who offends the US centralised empire will find themselves subject to trial by media because the media are owned by the same plutocratic class which owns the empire. So to believe what the mass media news outlets tell you about those who stand up to imperial power is to ignore reality. If our news outlets were sincerely doing their job as the fourth estate, they would be reporting on the persecution of Julian Assange in the same way they report on the persecution of any dissident journalist. But they don't. That in and of itself, speaks volumes. The media don't just stand silently by either. They smear him. They use half-truths, exaggerations, outright lies to build a picture of him as a stinky, Nazi, cat-torturing, rapist, Russian spy. 
And it's remarkable how consistent this characterization is across almost all these seemingly independent outlets. That's because corrupt and unaccountable power uses its political and media influence to smear Assange because, as far as the interests of corrupt and unaccountable power are concerned, killing his reputation is as good as killing him. Now, if everyone can be paced into viewing him with hatred and revulsion, they'll be far less likely to take WikiLeaks publications seriously and they'll be far more likely to consent to Assange's silencing and imprisonment. Someone can be speaking 100% truth to you, but if you're suspicious of him, you won't believe anything he's saying. If they can manufacture that suspicion with total or near total credence, then as far as our rulers are concerned, it is as good as putting a bullet to his head. Like, I mean, think about it. The mass media keeps saying to the public day after day without raising any eyebrows, hey, you know that bloke at the embassy who shares embarrassing truths about really powerful people? Well, guess what? He's actually a stinky Nazi rapist Russian spy who mistreats his cat. I mean, if this doesn't show you how propagandised the public already is, then I don't know what does. That goes straight in. A healthy worldview, one that's unmolested by corrupt narrative control, would look at Julian and see someone who is circulating inconvenient facts about powerful people, while also being called pretty much all the worst things in the world. And you'd know immediately that that person is being lied about by those self-same powerful people. Free of all the manipulations, it's just so obvious who is punching up and who is punching down. But the general public can't see that because they've had their worldview reversed by powerful storytellers. So everyone should always be extremely suspicious of anyone who defends the powerful from the less powerful. And it's really amazing that this isn't a more obvious dynamic to people, but when you look at it, this is actually a long-standing dynamic that is only just recently being brought into consciousness. Power has long been protected at the expense of the vulnerable. Priests were being protected over altar boys. Media moguls were being protected over actresses. Powerful, militarised nation-states were being protected over Indigenous populations, and so on. We can expect this to move into consciousness more and more as the old paradigms are examined. But for now, we live in a reality where unfathomably powerful, world-dominating government agencies are scrutinised and criticised far, far less than a guy trapped in an embassy who published inconvenient facts about those agencies. So when you turn the volume down and watch the actions without the overlay of story, you can see this chilling reality being played out. You can see that the relentless smear campaigns against Assange have given the unelected power establishment the ability to publicly make an example of a journalist who published uncomfortable truths. He's being made an example of, and they're doing this without provoking the wrath of the masses. We're witnessing a town square flogging that the crowd has been manipulated into cheering for. And the key is narrative control. That's the only thing holding this together. It's just like a web of stories that has enabled them to have their cake and eat it too. They get to act like the medieval lords of old. They get to inflict draconian punishment on a journalist. And they get to leave his head on a spike in the town square as a warning to other would-be truth-tellers. All the while having the public believe that such a bizarre violation of human rights is perfectly fine and acceptable. And on that point, I'd like to be really clear, this play is not just for the compliant populace. This story does have a dual purpose. This story is a warning to us. It's a warning written in between the lines for those of us who can read it about what happens to truth tellers when they get too much attention. So the real danger here is if they manage to prosecute and jail Assange in plain sight and with the consent of the populace. That would set an incredibly dangerous precedent. If the US prosecutes a foreign journalist for publishing factual information, 
And I believe that that would constitute a greater leap in the direction of Orwellian dystopia than the Patriot Act. And not just for America either, for the entire world. Of course, this would all fall apart in a hot second if the general population could see what we can see. No one likes a bully. And if they just turn the volume down on the lies they're being told, it's easy to see he's being persecuted by the same people he outed with his leaks. It's pretty bloody obvious once you strip it of the story. But right now, anyone who participates in the smear campaign against Assange and WikiLeaks is basically just saying, extremely powerful people should be able to lie to us without any difficulty or opposition at all. Now, most people don't actually believe that. I mean, unless I've, like you're one of those powerful people, why would you? Most people don't believe it, they don't want it, and with a tincture of courage and some sincere effort to bring consciousness to their own actions, they will stop it from happening. But right now that's not happening, is it? I mean, the sheepish silence around Julian Assange here in Australia is so creepy. We are a nation who will go to great lengths to bang the table of diplomacy and bring home citizens who have been caught overseas doing all sorts of really nefarious and dangerous things. But we're happy to ignore one of our own because we told he might have some, like, bad house manners or something. We're all just like, oh, yeah, fair enough. I mean, what? What? What is happening here? Why have people no perspective anymore? How is it their judgment is so easily knotted into a pretzel? Why are these lies and half-truths so uncritically swallowed? Well, I think, this is my theory, but I think ordinary citizens find themselves believing the smear campaigns against Assange because the alternative is to face the terrifying reality that our government is participating in the deliberate silencing and imprisonment of a journalist simply for publishing facts. And if they're capable of that, what else are they doing? Once you truly grok what is going on in plain sight before our very eyes, what choice do you have but to allow the full painful reality in and see for yourself the trajectory of this omnicidal, ecocidal, dystopian path we are hurtling on towards our own almost certain extinction. Like, people have enough trouble sitting with their own personal death, let alone have the courage to look the death of our species in the eye. It is much easier to believe in fairy tales of Putin Nazi cat torturers and occasionally send thoughts and prayers for some kind of deus ex machina miracle and face the stark reality that our planet is in the hands of a few death-loving money hoarders who have no plans for our salvation. And our only way out of here is to stand up, stare them down, and take back the wheel. So you can see the persecution of Julian Assange is a thread that once pulled unravels the whole tapestry. His mission and his story both tell the whole sordid tale of why we are where we are and what we need to do to reverse our trajectory. And it's pretty fucking simple. We tell the truth. That's it. But we tell the truth on all levels of our being, from the personal out to the political. We face our fears on all our levels of being and bring consciousness to the parts of ourselves that would much rather parrot fairy tales than have to do something that goes against our tribe. We have to decide to tell the truth anyway, with no mitigation, like the boy pointing out that the emperor is naked. If enough of us do that, a tipping point will be achieved and the manipulators will lose control. So keep fighting. <laughs> and tell the truth in as many interesting ways as possible. Let inspiration guide you to the easiest gets. Often we get mired in fighting the most defended parts of the narrative when there is low-hanging fruit just waiting to be grabbed. Be spontaneous and be playful and keep telling it like you see it, and we will win this. We will get him out of there, and that will be a win for everyone.